Okay, so this stage video is about plant transport. Um, investigations looking at the effect of temperature on the density of stomata on the lower epidermis of leaves. Uh, so the independent variable would be the temperature. We've got a range of those. And we're measuring, so the dependent variable is the density, so the number of stomata per millimetre squared on the lower epidermis. A couple of control variables, so they're all from the same species, and they're all fully grown. So we, we need to know why that means that it's comparable. So looking at question one, describe what the data shows. So we can see that um, as temperature increases, the mean number of stomata decreases, and then it sort of levels off. So if you're going to do um, a rough trend of what's going on, decreases, and at 12 degrees, after 12 degrees, the num mean number of st stomata per millimetre squared levels off. Second question is, why not use temperatures over 20 degrees? Well, you can clearly see for quite a, th a, a, a way before 20 degrees, um, there's not really any change, it's fluctuating around a point. So the mark scene would be it's a waste of time as the graph has already leveled off. Next question was why do the scientists use fully grown leaves? Um, for any control variable it means it allows comparison and then you look at how it could affect the dependent variable. The dependent variable in this case is the density of stomata. So it's important the leaves are fully grown because um, the number of stomata changes as the leaf gets older or you could say younger leaves may have a different number of stomata, so that would affect uh, what you're measuring. Equally, uh, the same, why is it important to use the same species? Again, different species will have different numbers of stomata, so that means it's not comparable. There's then an application question, uh, why is it an advantage to have fewer stomata at higher temperatures? Well, you know, so start off, or start off with what you know for an application question, you know uh, that stomata is the site of gas exchange but you also know that it's the site of water loss and you know that stomata close, the guard cells close, when a plant loses too much water. So why could it be an advantage? It's to reduce the water loss because at higher temperatures increases the kinetic energy of the water molecules increase, increasing the rate of water loss through the stomata by diffusion. So having fewer stomata at higher temperatures is going to reduce the rate of diffusion of water out of the stomata, so less water will be lost. The next data is looking at um, how carbon dioxide concentration changes and the mean number of stomata per millimetre squared has changed uh, for the last 30,000 years. So I've had to use some fossil evidence for this and they selected uh, at each uh, age 11 to 24 fossils should immediately ring alarm bells, it's a small sample size, it's not representative. The next question asks us to describe the data in, in the table. If you're ever describing data, I would always draw a sketch graph um, to help you describe it. So we can see as age comes close to the present day, so as we're going in this direction on the table, the carbon dioxide concentration is increasing. And you can see that all the time through there, apart from um, here. At the Next one, we can also see as, a, as we get close to the present day, the mean number of stomata per millimetre squared decreases, and it looks like it's starting to level off as we get close to the present day in the last five to 10,000 years. The next question is explain the link between carbon dioxide concentration and the number of stomata. Well, as we can see, uh, if you're looking at comparing these two uh, columns of the table, as this goes up, this goes down, roughly. So... Why might that be the case? Well, if you've got a higher carbon dioxide concentration, then you don't need as many stomata to get the same amount of, or same volume of CO2 into the leaf so that it can uh, provide CO2 for photosynthesis. So fewer stomata needed because there's a higher concentration gradient, uh, so the same amount of uh, CO2 can get into the leaf uh, from fewer stomata. That's also going to have the benefit of reducing water loss as well, having fewer stomata. The last question says, does increasing CO2 concentration cause a decrease in the number of stomata? So you're looking for yes and no. So the only agree point would be that you've got um, negative correlation. So the idea that as this increases, that decreases. A lot of no points though. So other factors could affect the number of stomata. So like temperature could have affected the number of stomata and we saw that from the, the first graph, the, the first data resource. Also, there's little change in the number of stomata um, since 10, in the last 10,000 years, whereas the concentration of CO2 has risen 
dramatically. There are other bits of evidence that don't support this. For example, here we've got a decrease in CO2 between 30 and 25,000 years, but we've got a, 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 and also we've got a decrease in the number of stomata. So that's going against that correlation. And also, from 5,000 years to the present day, we're having an increase in the number of stomata, and we're also having an increase in the concentration of CO2. So here we've got positive correlation, and here we've got positive correlation, going against the overall negative correlation trend. Let's look at standard deviation. We can see here that some standard deviation bars overlap, showing that we've not got significant difference uh, from 10,000 years to 5,000 years and from 5,000 years to the present day in the mean number of stomata per millimetre squared. Also, there's no statistical test. Really what we want to do is do a, a correlation coefficient between the concentration of carbon dioxide and the mean number of stomata per millimetre squared to, to prove that you would have a significant correlation. And we also found from earlier on that we've got a small sample size, so the, the data at the experiment is not representative. As I said a few times before, it may only be worth five marks or four marks in evaluation question, but keep writing as many points as you get. You don't know what's going to be worth a mark.